Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Welcome to the Show Up Dad podcast. Today, we have a very special guest joining us, Paul Kaler. Paul is a 41-year-old journeyman lineman from IBEW Local 51. He started his journey in 2001 at the young age of 18 and has been dedicated to his craft ever since. He's been happily married to his beautiful wife, Gina, since 2008. And for the last 16 years, Paul has been working for Ameren in Illinois, bringing his expertise and skills to the company. Beyond his professional accomplishments, Paul is a proud father to two incredible children. Tragically, he experienced the heartbreaking loss of his daughter, Ileana, in 2022. After, his courageous ba- after her courageous battle with brain cancer, She was just 10 years old at the time. Despite this unimaginable loss, Paul continues to be a pillar of strength and loving dedication to his son, Kipton, who is now eight years old. In addition to his unwavering commitment to his family and career, Paul is also a champion for a noble cause. The funds raised through Climbing for Kids, an organization founded by Jason Novak, directly support St. Jude's Children's Hospital. It is important to note that every penny donated goes to St. Jude without any selection or restriction and how the funds are used. This ensures that 100% of the money directly benefits the children and the families in need. Please join me in welcoming Paul to the Show Up Dad podcast as we delve into this journey, his journey as a lineman, his resilience as a father, and his dedication to making a difference in the lives of children through Climbing for Kids and St. Jude Children's Hospital. Welcome to our show, brother. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, for sure, man. Your story is just such a an amazing story. It's touching. Um, it's powerful, brother. And that's why we asked you to come on here. I mean, you're doing amazing things, man. For sure. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, helping us spread our word and for our mission. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, have you tell us a story about Climbing for Kids and how it evolved over the years, brother, if you don't mind. No, for sure. So I've been alignment since 2001 when I started my apprenticeship. And uh, in 2008, I went to work for Ameren, Illinois. And in 2012, Ameren decided to send some teams back to the International Alignments Rodeo. Fast forward to 2020, mm-hmm. 2020, get my dates straight. Um, Jason Novak, one of my good friends, went back to the rodeo uh, it was 2021, excuse me. Ameren was not sending teams at the time. He had decided to go on his own. He got with um, a couple other competitors from around the country and tried to do something different. Instead of um, just going out normally, he decided to raise some funds for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And uh, he ended up raising $5,000. Three guys raised $5,000 first year. And in 2022, Ameren, our company, um, was sending teams back. And I signed up like I have in the past. And in March of 2022, my daughter, Juliana, was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. So we we started our journey with that. And um, the Climbing for Kids part, Jason texted me one day, said, give me a call. I got an idea. And my daughter and my family, my son, and my wife, we always like going to the rodeo. It is a family event. You go out there. It's very family friendly. And um, Jason teamed up with our company, Ameren, Illinois. To, re- to raise more funds for St. Jude Children's Hospital. And he actually invited Juliana to present the check on stage at the International Lyman's Rodeo Banquet and um, in October. Mm-hmm. So we, we talked to her and she loved it. She loved the idea of St. Jude. We've always been supporters of St. Jude and she was a St. Jude patient at the time. 
at their Midwest clinic in Peoria, Illinois. We weren't at the mm-hmm. Memphis office, but we were in Peoria with all the same uh, benefits they provide. So she was all about it. And um, we went out there, even though she was very sick, she couldn't walk. She was in a wheelchair. Um, she got on stage in front of all those people with a smile on her face, walked up and gave the check to St. Jude. And uh, it was a very proud moment as a dad to see her stand up in front of all those people when she didn't have to. Yeah. And uh uh, it was, it was great. And, uh, sadly she passed away about six weeks after that. Man. Well, first and foremost, I just want to let you know, brother, man, my condolences for sure. Um, I can't even imagine, you know, and I'm sure it was, you know, that just little thoughts like that, just little moments that you had towards the end of her life. You know what I mean? Those are things that you're going to cherish forever, you know? So I'm I'm glad to see that, you know, you got to experience, you know, her going on stage like that and just, just, just showing that cur- courage, you know, cause that's, that's inspiring. You know what I mean? To whenever I, I deal with children and I see children who are, are suffering and going through certain things like that, man, I always look at them and they're so courageous. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, man, I, I don't know how I could be that courageous if I was in their shoes. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. crazy, you know? She uh, she was inspiring to a lot of people, um, just the yeah. way she handled her uh, sickness. Um, I don't think we never did talk to her about her, her cancer being terminal. Like mm-hmm. we opened it up for questions. St. Jude, when you go when you go to them, you know, the day we found out about her diagnosis um, being in Peoria, I remember going to her hospital room after you know you're in and out with doctors and trying to get your head around all all what's going on and i distinctly remember walking in to the room and there's like seven people standing there in the room and all you can think of is what's next what are these people there for Mm -hmm. but it was the saint jude team that came in within an hour of her diagnosis saying i'm the social worker i'm a psychologist i'm a child life specialist i'm the doctor i'm the social worker let's let's take a walk down to the clinic let's see what what you need right now. Let's, let's see how we can help. So within an hour or two of her diagnosis, we were already in St. Jude's clinic, providing resources to us, just being there to help when you're, you know, still distraught and, uh, you know, having somebody to talk to that will provide help was a amazing experience for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how was, uh, how did, faith play out in that if you don't mind me asking um it's kind of a tough question because yeah the big question you 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 know ask every day is why yeah you know you know for everything but especially this and you know that's something we struggle with a lot is it faith-based is it something else is it a bigger you know i i don't have an answer for that and yeah it's something i ask myself every day is the why for this thing, you know, the world would have been a better place with her here and not here. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a question that will probably never be answered, but mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's okay to ask it too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I always tell people during those tough questions, you know, cause I, I deal with a lot of, um, I, I, I do, I see all walks, everything, you know, and, um, a lot of the questions we get is why, you know, and, like you said, it's okay to ask why, you know, I believe we serve a God who's big enough to, to handle us questioning what happened, you know? And if I thought otherwise, that if I felt like you couldn't question that God, that's not a God I want to serve. That's not a God I want to believe in. You know what I mean? Cause God's so much bigger than us. So, you know, it is okay. It is okay to ask why, you know, and, there's a scripture that says that though we don't see clearly right now, we see through like a darkened glass, right? Nothing's, it's it's fuzzy, like looking through a stained glass. When we do go to meet God and we do see God, we're going to be able, all that, that blockade of not being able to see clear and the confusion is going to be removed. And every single question we had, it will be answered by him, you know, and I take comfort in that. I do, you know, cause we do, we want to ask why. So, yeah, we do take comfort in no, hopefully knowing she's at a better, a better place. 
Absolutely. you know, wherever that might be. I, nobody can answer that, but you know, I, mm-hmm. I think me and my wife both feel that she's not suffering anymore. She's not, you know, struggling. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she's at peace. Absolutely. Now, I wanted to ask you, how has your experience as a lineman influenced your perspective, your perspective on life and even in fatherhood, brother? How does that influence that? Um, it's a good question. Um, so obviously being a lineman, mm-hmm. we're all about working the overtime, you know, opportunities for overtime are always there. Um, pro- before she was sick, I, I probably worked a little too much, mm-hmm. you know? that next call out, Hey, we can go on this vacation easier. You know, the money's always there and there's always calls. Once she got sick, um, everything shut down. I, you know, I didn't work for a long time. I was able to do that through my coworkers at Amron donating vacation days to me. Um, I never missed a doctor's appointment. I never, um, try, you know, never missed, you know, anything, you know, I haven't, I didn't work basically for a year, you know, I work, I would go to work when I could to save some vacation time for later, but it would be um, once or twice a week at most. She went to the doctor at least once a week, sometimes two to three times a week, depending on some treatments or some uh, uh, yeah, follow-up appointments. And uh, we would always go, we, we split between uh, going to Peoria, Illinois, where the St. Jude clinic was, and then we're about um, 100 miles from Chicago. And Chicago is the closest pediatric brain tumor, tumor clinic in the country. So there's only certain places that handle brain cancer for CHID. There's about eight, I think there was like 18 of them in the country, mm-hmm. you know, spread out. Um, and they all talk to each other. They all know each other. They're all doing the same treatments. You know, that was the, you know, you would go to a doctor and, the first thing we would ask, are we in the right spot? You know, we weren't limited by, um, we have to go here. It's like, if we have to be in Seattle, we can be in Seattle tomorrow. If we have to be in Stanford, you know, we can be there, you know, these, these, but they assured us. And we definitely asked questions and talked to a lot of specialists throughout the country. And they all came up with the same, um, plan. Maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you make some tough choices when it's terminal cancer, clinical trials, what to do. Um, one of the number one things that we did was respect her quality of life. You know, that was top priority for us. Um, yeah. It didn't matter what article you searched. She had a, what was called a DIPG brain tumor. And uh, it's it's pretty nasty. You know, there's no cure. They don't know why it even, where it comes from. Mm-hmm. The life expectancy was six to 12 months. They told us that right away. So that quality of life for her was, was top notch, you know, yeah. staying out of hospitals, doing what she wanted to do, you know, not saying no to anything, including getting a dog. And if anybody knows my wife that's listening out here, a dog was never, ever going to be in a <laughs> equation, but she, uh, she's so smart. She came home right after we came home from the hospital for, she goes, you know what, mom and dad, I think I need an emotional support dog. <laughs> so there we were. We, St. Jude helped us hooked up with another person, another person. We ended up getting this nice old dog and she was the best dog. She, we still have her. She's the best dog ever. Every time I look at her, I give her a smile on my face to know that there's a dog in our house and that was never going to happen with my wife. <laughs> so <laughs> never say never. <laughs> if you, right. You never say never. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that's, uh, that's awesome, brother. I, I'm glad to see that, um, uh... You know, you're able to use your lineman influence, you know what I mean? And and being able to, to just kind of shape your perspective on life and fatherhood, you know. What are others, you know, you talked about some memorable, uh, memorable moments, right? With your daughter, the dog and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, getting on stage. What else can you share with us? Some experiences you had while supporting families through climbing for kids, if you don't mind. Um. For climbing for kids, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a it's a big focus for us now. Just a way of our industry to get together. I don't think uh, like to get together for a certain cause to go to something good. Um, 
we're always taking ideas. We we come up with different things, try to raise money. One of the things we did this year was outside of the uh, International Lyman's Road Expo. We had a booth outside the outside the convention with three huge tables full of donated tools. You buy a twenty dollar ticket, you get to pick which table, and then uh, and then we drew it that Friday. I think yeah, we drew three tickets on Friday. It was that was a huge success for us. You know, mm-hmm. companies, vendors, don't donating, donating stuff was was really big for us. Yeah, and it just fills you up inside, right? I don't, I can't really equate to any other feeling you get when you are able to help people. You know, um, like I, you know, I, I, I can sentiment with with you guys helping people like that because I mean, I, I, I deal with that all the time as well. So it's just, it's just a great joy just being able to help people. Right. Yeah. And we made some some great connections. One of the big goals we have for climate for kids is getting the word out that we started the Instagram page mm-hmm. um, just to try to have a central way of people to get a hold of us. There is an email address, uh, mm-hmm. climate for kids at Amron.com. That's monitored. Me, we, me and Jason and a couple other people have access to that. Um, but we're always trying to just get the word out because that was a big thing that we heard from people, it was like, oh, I didn't know you guys were doing this. I haven't heard of this before. How can we help? How can we help? So we'll have uh, 10 months to wrangle a bunch of people in. And, and the people we, some, some people we met that weekend, you know, we're going to be friends with forever. The stories they heard, you know, we didn't, um, and one of our goals was not to, it was definitely in memory of Juliana this year, but we're, it's not like, we don't want her to be the poster child of why you give. We want yeah. to, you to give for a good cause. And this is one of the best causes near and dear to our hearts. Um, and you'll see like all the Amron shirts had a G with a lightning bolt. It's kind of a little symbol. I think I got it on my hat right here that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Amron put those, I didn't even know they were doing that. They put it on our trading shirts and our hats this year. And it was, uh, it was a special, special little touch. Yeah, for sure. For sure. No, that's, um, it's cool. I mean, what you guys, like I said, is, is absolutely fantastic, you know, and just giving back to this trade, you know, um, sometimes in life, you know, things that happen to us, going back to, we talked about earlier, the why, you know, when it happens to us, now we're able to comfort those who are going through the same thing, right? So like you said, she may not be the poster child, right? But it's near and dear to your heart, and also you can sympathize with those people because you have gone through it, you know, especially with other children, you know, and because, I mean, like you said, this is something that affects, you know, a lot of people out there. I don't, I don't even know the statistics or anything like that yeah. about what she had or anything like that, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's going to continue to happen to other children as well, you know? Yeah, about 150 to 250 kids a year in the United States get diagnosed with DIPG. So it's a very, 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 very small number. Mm -hmm. Um, But the people, some people we met out there that had a story with, Hey, my nephew was in St. Jude and they helped him. And now he's 25. Hey, my, my son was a St. Jude patient. We had a a scare of something, you know, they take you in right away. Um, Those stories meant a lot to me, Jason and some other people. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you get to see in their face and then we would talk about our experience after that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So out of your guys's group, are you the only one that had to experience this or did Jason experience something similar or? No. um, Jason started this. He heard a story at church um, Mm. one day of a St. I think it was a St. Jude family, how they really helped him and it, it inspired him to start this. And then we were, we have been friends for years Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, touched his heart. And that's why he invited us out there with the help of our company, you know, without, without Amron's support, um, a lot of this wouldn't be possible. You know, there were, um, they bring extra people out there to help us volunteer at the booth. We have a lot of, you know, rodeo, our team is pretty big. And then we had like eight teams out there and I think every single one of the guys took a turn volunteering at the booth, helping write tickets down yeah. and logistics people. So it, it takes an army to do it. It's yeah. not just me and Jason and uh, one of our executive vice presidents, Craig Gilson, 
Um, us three were kind of the ideas behind it. We would talk once a month what we can do. Um, Craig had the power to get a lot of things done through Amron. Mm -hmm. where we're just working linemen, you know, <laughs> you know yeah. without, so without, without him, um, it, it, it took everybody, you know, yeah. I, would, I would say without it, 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 it took so many people mm -hmm. and it was a huge success and we're hoping to do it next year. We're going to treat, treat, tweak some things. Hey, what went right? What went wrong? Mm -hmm. Um, I think we have a, a solid foundation for next year. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What are some of the challenges that you've actually ran into with having to run a, an organization and how did you overcome those if you don't mind? So I think getting the word out is mm -hmm. the, one of the, one of the challenges and, and you're helping with this. Um, Ryan from Powerline podcast is a big help. I was on the line life podcast. You know, people are wanting to talk to us to let us get the word out to your, your platforms yeah. and without, without all you guys, um, it wouldn't be possible who, you know, who would know it, you would just see it at the booth, but hopefully we can let more people know, let more companies know. I think one of the drivers of success in the future for climate for kids is being like a company like Amron who will, um, maybe do a company match. Hey, your employees raise this, we'll match it. At Amron, we do a t-shirt drive. If you donate $50, you get a nice climate for kids t-shirt, you know? And like any, any lineman I've ever met, they love stuff. You know, if you give something, yeah. you get a little something back, you know, giving is great. But that that was a huge success for our company to raise a lot of money. And uh, I think we're going to continue to do that. Little things like that. I think if other companies would get on board and it doesn't have to be hundreds of thousand dollars, you know, it's, it's, hey, if your company raises a thousand dollars and the other and the employees match, you know, match that, that's, it adds up big time. And it's all yeah. going to a good cause. There's no middleman. It goes directly to them. I think that's one of the things we like to reinvoke is, you know, there's nobody handling any money. It goes directly to St. Jude. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. No, that that's good. I'm I'm glad to uh to see that our platforms are actually getting that word out for you. Um that's important because word of mouth is great, right? But man, with technology the way it is, it's it could help so much more people get the word out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I talked to you on the phone and, um, and told you this, but I want to tell your, your listeners that when my daughter got sick, I made a promise to her that, that something good has to come out of this. And, um, I think about that every day. How can I, how can we take something as horrible as this and, and do something positive from her, from our experience, from, from her so I, I think about that promise I make to her and how we can and do different things. Mm -hmm. Now, for sure. Now, speaking about your daughter, right? How has that loss shaped your approach to parenting? Because you still have another child, right? And yeah. your dedication to helping other families face similar challenges, if you don't mind. Um, when we were going through from March until she passed away in November, uh -huh. Um, Kipton, our son, it, it, I'm sure it was hard on him because he didn't see his mom and dad. We were gone a lot. We were gone at appointments a lot. He was with grandma and grandpa a lot. You know, thank God my parents live close and Gina's parents live, you know, 10 minutes farther than that. So they were always there to help us. They always had family. He always had family. We, uh, we never missed a baseball game of his, even though we would go in a wheelchair, you know, we might be late. Um, we had to kind of, step back from him to focus our most of our attention on her because that's what we needed most and we would talk about it what about him it's like well we'll we'll take care of him too but this is this needs to be our main focus and he was a trooper he was there he would go to some appointments with us he was a proud brother you know going to you know they both went to the same grade school you know she didn't go back to school um she was in fourth grade mm -hmm. Um, she did, she did one of her goals at the school year in August here was she wanted to go back to school. Cause in the town I live in Peru, Illinois, the middle, you know, the grade school, then you go to junior high in fifth grade. That's all she wanted to do was go to school. Yeah. She, so, so the school stepped up. Um, she did actually get to go to school beyond this. She was vice president of student council. <laughs> she, she would still volunteer. She was a great talented singer. She would be in the choir. 
and the chorus she got to sing a, in a veterans day concert so even though she was not she was the same girl but she wasn't the same girl physically yeah she was she didn't back down and she wasn't shy and she took she got up there in front of everybody in a wheelchair you know with a smile on her face and uh in, she's very inspiring she should be inspiring to to us to all her friends and classmates mm -hmm. we're proud of, i was proud of her every day she was yeah. a great example to a lot of kids that might be going through it in the future or some maybe some classmates that are having some problems like well juliana came to school when she was sick so mm -hmm. no for sure and i just want to add on to that brother she learned that courage from someone, you know, watching you and mama be courageous. <laughs> so my hat's off to you guys for sure. Thank you, you guys. Appreciate ra that. Raised an amazing daughter. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. We talk about with both of our kids all the time is uh, kindness. And she was one of the kindest persons. We talk with my son kindness, you know, are you kind? Are you kind? Are you kind? Mm -hmm. it, it comes, it's a word every day we use. And, um, and she was kind, she would, she would go to doctor's appointments and we would have to make muffins for the doctors the day before. Hey, we got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. All right. We got to make the muffins for the doctor. All right. We got to <laughs> make this. All right. Um, we're up in uh, Chicago for a doctor appointment. Hey, you know, those donuts that are really good. Those pumpkin spice donuts that the bakery has, let's buy two dozen, give them to the doctors and the nurses. So she, so she was always thinking about other people and uh, absolutely. We never said no. <laughs> Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. <laughs> man what a what a testament man just to your daughter what amazing yeah. absolutely amazing man but like i said she learned it from somebody <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean you know don't ever forget that man you guys you guys are awesome bro for sure yeah I, thank you i appreciate that now what advice would you give to individuals who want to make a difference and start their own charitable initiatives, if you, if you don't mind, brother. Um, I think you have to find something you're passionate with. I think mm -hmm. without the passion for something, uh, you, you'll just you'll it'll fizzle out. Yeah, you know, I didn't have passion this before my daughter got sick. I'll be honest with you. You know, I would we would always contribute. Uh, money is the easiest thing to give. Hey, here's some money to St. Jude. But you never really until you experience what they offer and how they do help you and how the the phone is always on for them to answer. So I think that's, you, you, you got to find what you're passionate about, you know, and that's how most good charities start is yeah. a passion or some, something tragic happened. So get some passion We find any cancer foundation. And there was so many foundations that reached out to us. Make a wish was a big one. Mm -hmm. My daughter did a great make a wish. Um, she actually designed, we had a, unfinished basement at the time. And when you meet with make a wish, they, they zoom like this and they say, whatever you want, do you, there, there's no limit. You want to go on a safari in a helicopter in Africa, we'll get you there, you yeah. know? So she was a big theater. Uh, she loved theater. She was an actress. She did. She was actually trying out for a play. Uh, when we took an ambulance ride down to the first night and I was driving behind her and she was calling, she goes, Hey, did the, did the play results come out? Did I make the play? And she was going against like a 17 year old high school girl. She's 10. Like, no, you didn't get the job. But oh, Okay. So we thought um, something, she would do something theater related, like go to New York city, go see Hamilton, do stuff like that. Um, but she decided to, well, actually we told her whatever you don't pick, we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Like she was between a couple things. Like you just pick one and we're going to just do the other. And she decided to finish our basement. So they stepped in and so many people in our community stepped up. You know, you get a lot of messages when when tragedy strikes like this of like, hey, what can I do to help you? Yeah. You know, so many messages and so many people. And it's hard to ask for help. I can honestly tell you that. 
like your pride steps in. It's like, oh, no, we can do it all ourselves, but you can't do it yourself. So make a wish did a lot, a lot of community members, friends stepped up. So we finished this basement, you know, Home Depot is big into make a wish. Mm-hmm. Best Buy donating TVs, pop, like popcorn machine. There's a slushy machine over here. That's all she wanted. I want to finish the basement, but I want a slushy machine. You like the ones in the gas station? So we got one yeah. sitting over here. It was just great. And when that thing came, you know, I want all this, but I want that slushy machine. So <laughs> I think it's a slush puppy donated that it was in 10,000 cups and, <laughs> and slushies and everything else. So, and yeah, we ended up do, going to New York City to see Hamilton. We met the cast mm-hmm. um, of Hamilton. We, met Anthony Rizzo. He was big in a pediatric. We went to a Yankees game on the field. Just another great band that um, we, we reached out to. And he's like, yep, here's some tickets. Be on the field. Went to batting practice. Met him. Great, great man. Wow. Went to Hamilton. We were on the Today Show. I think I mentioned that to you before. Um, another yeah. weird, weird coincidence of one of my good friends knows somebody he goes like oh you're going to be in new york he's like i'm in new york next week i'm going to a party with savannah guthrie not like a friend of a friend he's like i'll ask her to go on the today show <laughs> so <laughs> through a friend of a through a friend of a friend of a friend we ended up meeting her having a little vip access and she came over and talked to us great great people at the today show and they actually do some great stuff with saint jude stories if you ever watch uh mm-hmm. if you ever watch thing and i'm actually still talk to one of the producers to this day. He'll send a message every now and then checking in on us. Great, great people over there. Mm-hmm. How was that experience on the Today Show? Good. It's a lot of, it's quick though. They We only talked to them for about, we met Hoda and we met Al. We met, we met them all for a couple, couple minutes, but it was great. And actually we got, re- she, Juliana got recognized uh, three times in New York City, walking around New York City in a restaurant we were, somebody came up and asked if she's on the Today Show um sitting out on sitting outside of a restaurant somebody said something and we went to uh the play wicked when we were out there and somebody came up to her and asked her it was crazy <laughs> that they recognized her right away yeah so that was a fun experience for her oh b that was oh you know, yeah i was on it <laughs> <laughs> man i bet you she was eating and loving every moment oh yeah <laughs> yeah that's great. so cool so cool now we talked about uh you know advice that you can give to individuals, you know, want to start the charitable initiatives. And when we're talking about that, you said something that I thought was pretty interesting. You said pride and how people come together during these times and, and want to, to help out. Right. But pride keeps you from saying you need the help. Why is that? What do you think brother? Cause I, I've heard other people say the same thing. <laughs> that might be even part of being a lineman <laughs> for asking for help sometimes, you know? Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, how often does your pride step up and say, no, I can do it, you know, or I don't want to ask for help and you can't figure mm-hmm. out a problem. Um, sometimes you got to put your pride aside. Um, and, and we, we definitely did, you know, not at first, I can honestly, you know, not at first, you know, you don't, you don't even know what's going on, but yeah. after a while, if somebody, you know, like the guy that built our house here, it would text me and say, Hey man, I'm thinking about you. If you need anything, I say, Hey man, I, I need this basement framed like tomorrow. He's like, I'll be there. Him and his whole crew showed up. He called the local lumber yard, donated lumber, got a drywaller, got the, you know, it was done within two days. So that's the stuff you don't forget about. Yeah. Well, I, I'll never forget about a lot of people that just, when you needed something, you need it now. You don't need, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. No excuses. Just get it done. Right. Just, yep. Yep. Man. Now, I wanted to ask you. In what ways has climbing for kids impacted the lives of children and families you've supported? What have you seen? Um, in in small ways, I think I met a guy out there um, from a company. Mm-hmm. I actually met him at a meeting here in Illinois, and he was at the at the line majority. I came up to him, and he sent me an email the other day. He goes, "You know what? I'm donating. To, I'm donating to St. Jude once a month forever, just because I met you and your daughter." So that's a small thing, you know, bigger companies. Yeah. We've met some other companies that have donated some, some large amounts of money. And I don't know if we'll see like our dollar impacted because there's such a big organization. But I think as we grow and we see bigger, bigger dollar amounts donated, you, you know, people are going to look at this international lineman rodeo, which used to be a, uh, it's the competition's great. The, the fun we have out there. 
and the the people we meet and the people we stay in touch with is great. But if if they can look at like me and Jason and our organization of like, hey man, these people that care and we're gonna help, we're gonna step up. You know, I'm a lineman, he's a lineman. That's all I've ever done. You know, I'm a normal guy, nothing special about me. But this tragedy's happened, and, and we're we're trying to turn it around and make something positive. But I hope that's what people look at us and like these are these are some guys that are trying to make some change. I don't know if we'll ever see it like dollar wise, like, oh, this dollar goes to this, to this, to this. But mm-hmm. as the hopefully the number grows every year, we'll we'll gain some yeah, gain some mm-hmm. notoriety. I don't I don't even want notoriety. That that's not the right word. But yeah. I just want people to look at our climate for kids organization. It's like these people care. So Yeah. No, that's that's true, man, because um you never know how it's gonna impact people. I mean, I'm, I'm even today messages that I put out two years ago, I'm having people reach out and be like, man, that saved my marriage or man to help me become the father I am today or whatever. And it's like, wow, really? I started that off and I was in my bedroom with my foot on the door on an old laptop, hoping my kids would come in. You know what I mean? (laughs) And I'm like, and even when I listened to some of the older podcasts, you know what I mean? Like, man, wow. Any, I can't believe anybody was listening. (laughs) (laughs) No, you have a great message. And it's just the simplest thing of like the show up dad. Like my dad was a uh, high school football coach and a Uh driver's ed teacher. He, he, He worked a lot, you know, he worked practices and, I never remember my dad missing any baseball game. I have a older brother, younger brother, and younger sister. Like I don't remember my parents or grandparents ever missing anything. And I want to be that for my son. And it's hard being a lineman. You know, if that hurricane hits and you're which I haven't been on a hurricane in a long time, but you know, you gotta weigh that, well, he's got five basketball games and you're helping coach and you know, that's the stuff I like to do now is always help coach his baseball teams, even though I'm not a good baseball player, you know. Mm-hmm. We coach football, um, basketball. If they need somebody to help rebound, I'll, I, I love doing that stuff now. That's how we keep uh, we keep him pretty busy, and it keeps us pretty busy also. Mm-hmm. How do you balance that? Because I, I know that's, I mean, being a lineman, right? And then your commitment for climbing for kids, and then just being that present father. How are you balancing that? Because I, I know a lot of people want to know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well. <laughs> The the balance is more uh, family focused for us now, not so much the overtime. Because being working for uh, utility, I was just telling you before, it's like uh, the call the call came two hours ago to go to work, and it's like, no, I, I think this interview is way more important than that couple hours of overtime. And every day, being alignment with me and my wife, we talk in the morning. What's going on tonight? If they ask to work late. What do I say? Is it yes, no? Do we have somebody to pick up? My wife's a third grade school teacher, so she works full time too. Do we have somebody to pick up Kipton? You know, there's all this logistic stuff. It's not, it's a little different than being a, a contractor where if you work, you know, six ten, seven tens, you're pretty set hours. You know, storms are a little different, but working at the power company, it's the end of the day, car hits a pole. Hey, we need four guys. You know, yes, no, I got this. So the past, yeah almost a year and a half now, you know, my focus has not been much on working overtime um, and being, being here for my wife. If she needs me, sometimes you just need to be together, you know? Yeah. Even though it was a year since we lost her, it's, it doesn't seem like a year. It seems like yesterday, some days. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how our tragedies like that will make a couple or break a couple, you know? Um, and it's good to see that you guys are leaning on each other. Uh, I know when my parents lost my younger brother, who was a lineman as well, they had no one else to rely on because I lived out here. They they lived secluded in the mountains by themselves. You know what I mean? My dad owned a ranch, all this other stuff. And <laughs> now baby brother's gone. You know, he's not up there to help him with the branding and, and picking up the bills and everything else that goes in into working on a, a, a working cattle ranch. Right. So they had to really rely on themselves, you know, and it, they've grown closer throughout that whole tragedy. If you get what I mean. Oh, I, I, I do. And yeah, I, I couldn't imagine this alone. We, we went through this together. Mm-hmm. 
and uh yeah we definitely lean on each other because nobody else i can talk to about it that's been through exactly what he has but my wife you know mm -hmm. yeah for sure and you know there's a there's a scripture that says that uh when one falls down the other one is there to help them get back up you know and that's what a marriage is for right you know when we're going through things in life tragedy strikes you know when one's not courageous or one feels like they can't go any further guess what the other one's there to pick them up and help them along the way so it's good to see man it really is it's really good to see that uh you guys are really, you know, thriving and turning this whole and this whole thing into a, a positive, you know, for sure. Yeah, and it's it is a struggle. You know, it's going to be a struggle. Um, I've talked about it before, but like the the sadness is almost like an honor to her every day. If I'm a little extra sad, it just means I'm thinking about her a little more that day. Mm -hmm. So, I even a sad sad day is a good day if I'm thinking about her. Yeah, for sure. Now back to you climbing for kids. Is there any upcoming projects or initiatives that uh, you guys are undertaking in the near future or anything? Anything like that? Um, there is, but okay. until it's until it's official, I'm not going to talk about it. I got there's you. some, you know, what I mean, there's some. I, I can just tell you, there's some wonderful people in this country that I've been talking to that we're going to do some things mm -hmm. and uh, it's, and I think there's things out there that we haven't even thought about. If hopefully if, if you're listening to this, you know, if you have an idea, go to climb for kids on Instagram and uh, DM us and Hey, what about this? What about doing this? Um, and we're up for it. So, and, and I'll, I'll definitely let you know when, when these things come out, we're going to try to promote some things and different, different ways to make money, different ways to raise money. That's our, uh, that's our goal. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, it's definitely a worthy cause to get behind. Um, we deal with operation smiles. Um, we used to support them and also make a wish as well. Our foundation supports that. So we definitely like to get behind organizations like the one your guys are working with and, uh, just try to give back as much as possible for sure. Yeah. And that's the message. All these people that I've talked to said the same thing. We, as a, mm -hmm. as being a lineman, you know, obviously we make a really good wage and with the overtime, but if, if you can do something positive with that, some of that money, you know, most linemen I know have some money to donate back, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's easy to ask how many, we, we do it all the time in our shop. You know, we got 20 guys. If somebody's down, you pass the hat. Yeah. You know, it's been on every show up since I've ever been on. A guy gets sick, his wife gets sick. It's, you know, you, you pass the hat, you take care of each other. And I never thought I'd be the guy that needed the hat passed for. Hmm. But I was, you know, you don't even ask for it. It just gets done. Yeah. You know, the the company with the don letting people donate vacation days, that's like passing the hat. You know, they didn't have to let other people donate their vacation days to me. You know, union and supervisors both did it. It was, it was, you know, it was great. The union, whatever I needed, the union would help me with, you know, my brothers and, and sisters from different areas, people I've never met before. You know, I work in the LaSalle operating center. Ameren's pretty big company. It's everything from, it's like two thirds of Illinois is all Ameren, Illinois. Yeah. And and we'd have people reach out from, from everywhere. Hey, this guy needs some help. Let's, you know, there, it was great. It was wonderful. Yeah, no, for sure. It's what a beautiful thing, man, to see all those hands getting involved and just trying to make a difference and helping someone out. Um, speaking of passing the hats, I had a past guest who's a legend down here in uh, Southern California. His name is Jay Clark. Anybody who knows that guy, that guy is just absolutely amazing. But anyhow, long story short, he talked about how beautiful it is to see people passing the hat and what a greater example of God's love, even if you don't believe in God, but that's God's love for you is people sharing that love for you and, and, and pitching in 
for you, people that don't even know you. You know, what a great example that is, he said. And uh, it, he's absolutely right. He's 100% right. That is God's love for you, you know? So. Yeah, especially now around the holidays, man. People are, you know, if you could help out a family that needs help with getting Christmas presents to their kids, you know, that's mm -hmm. something you should look into. Most churches have of lists of people to do that for, and it's not hard to find. No, for sure. Um, I know our local did a uh, toy drive that they do every year for a Christmas party, and you got to bring uh, two unwrapped gifts or something like that, and um, they give back to the community, right? So yeah, for sure, especially during this time, people are down and out, looking to those local charities. It's like Paul said, and uh, give back, man. Tis the season, right? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes two ten dollar gifts from Target might help a family more than more than you'll ever know especially if a bunch of people get together and do it. Yeah, absolutely. It all adds up, brother. <laughs> yeah. Now, what message or legacy do you hope to leave through your work with Climbing for Kids as a father, if you don't mind, Paul? Um, I think it's doing something bigger than yourself. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't personally want to be remembered as for Climbing for Kids, but if the, the name Climbing for Kids just gets bigger and bigger and me and Jason are, see, feel the same way, mm -hmm. you know, um, hey, those bunch of goofy linemen climbing all those poles in Kansas City in October are raising a bunch of money for for St. Jude. That I think that's going to be a great legacy for the line community go, moving forward. You know, I think I don't, you know, you don't have to be involved in a rodeo to donate to Climbing for Kids. You know, it's just a bonus that we have done in the past. And uh, I think that's a good legacy of like our community of linemen given to one specific cause. And there's so many great causes out there. I don't, this is just the one that you know, Jason started. I'm getting on board with. Um, and I think that's the goal of our legacy with that. It's like, it's going to be bigger than the rodeo, not, but not bigger than the rodeo, but bigger, you know, associate the two together. Yeah. No, and that, that it's, it's like I said, it's, it's such a worthy cause brother. And, I know coming from our community, you know, a lot of people from the outside looking in always think, oh, these linemen, you know, they make a lot of money and all this other stuff. Well, let's, uh, let, yeah, we do, you know, better than most. But um, let's start giving back. Let's start utilizing that money that we're making and helping people and families out, you know, bringing that hope. One of the things that our foundation has always prided itself in is, we're here to restore hope. And if you do so by giving to a charity, you can do so by even just being your brother's keeper, you know, down and out, passing that hat, like uh, Jay said. You know, all these little things, even just asking your brother on the line, hey, man, how's your family? How are you guys doing? You know, that that's a message right there of hope. You know, giving someone encouragement. So without further ado, Paul, I just wanted to thank you for coming on our podcast and sharing what you do, sharing your amazing story, brother. And I just want to give you the opportunity to let us know how they can reach you. And it will be in the show notes as well. So the floor is yours, bro. Yeah. Um, on Instagram, it's climbing for kids, C L I M B I N for kids, F O R for kids. Um, you can look at my Instagram, Paul underscore underscore Kaler, K O E H L E R. Um, there's an email address, climate for kids at amron.com. That's monitored. Uh, shoot me a DM. You know, I'm sure if you get a hold of David, he's got my number. You know, it's a, that's, that's pretty much it, man. I appreciate your time. I appreciate what you're doing for for your show and your your voice. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, for sure, man. Thank you. I appreciate guys like you and telling these wonderful stories just to bring hope, man. So I appreciate you and just your courage. Keep it up, man. And don't forget what I said, man. Your daughter's courageous and she learned it from you, man. So you and your wife are doing amazing stuff. So just keep that up, brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate you. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.